Earlier in the show, we got to see Leanne's living room makeover in true L.A. style. It was full of DIY projects that were super budget friendly and so well done. So uh, also in true L.A. style, she's going to share the tips and tricks she learned because that's what she does. She teaches us all. Leanne, please educate us. Let's start with stenciling that wall. What do we need to know? Well, there's a lot of roadblocks that I find, certainly novice DIYers, but even some seasoned DIYers, some roadblocks and mistakes that we can make along the way. And that includes sometimes having the wrong product, sometimes not having enough of a product, and lack of the right tools. So I'm going to share my go-to tools that either are some of my favorites or some that I discovered during my living room project, including a big, big, big important tip for doing the wall stencil. And that is, if you want to take on a project like stenciling a wall, or in my case, stenciling all of the walls, don't just buy one stencil. Let me just tell you straight up, that will not be enough material to help you get through the project swiftly and get a good end result. And here's the reason why. When you use more than one, so I have, I actually ordered three. So here's two of them here and you can see they're reusable. The paint's kind of built up on there. I ordered a third one because then I was able to cut it up into smaller pieces to get into the edges as well. And when you're using more than one, it allows you to uh, put one up on the wall and stencil, take that down and put that to the side to dry while then you grab the second one to put on the wall. So you can work through the project so, so quickly. But one of the most important secret ingredients for using stencils, certainly on the wall, is to use a low-tack spray adhesive. It creates kind of a, a post-it note stickiness. These are still tacky on the background. And that basically acts as your second set of arms, holding the stencil onto the wall while you apply your paint in a very thin coat to give you a perfect end result. Low tack, not permanent spray adhesive, low tack. You don't want this to become an art installation stuck on your wall. <laughs> you want to be able to peel it off easily. And that low tack adhesive, it's not going to leave anything on your wall. You're just going to peel the stencil off and put it somewhere else and it's fine. That's it. Just read the directions on the spray can because oftentimes it will tell you to spray a light coat, let it sit until it's dry. You don't want to be putting the spray adhesive on the wall while it's still wet. Just wait till it's dry and you get that tackiness. And then it's great. And really, you can reuse one spray probably probably three, four, maybe five times before you have to reapply again. And I just wanted to point out this. Uh, when I've ordered stencils in the past, they've come with these little levels because you want to, you definitely want to make sure that your stencil pattern is level along the wall. So you can either use a big level, which is a little awkward, especially if you're trying to get the stencil, hold the stencil up as well. But this little guy just clips right onto the top of the stencil. So when you do the spray adhesive, it holds it on and you can make sure that your pattern goes perfectly level around your room. So smart. Love that. Okay, let's move on to the desk, LA. So the desk again was my $20 find and I really wanted that factory finish, satin finish on it. It needed to be durable because it's a work surface with a desktop. Now, one of the biggest mistakes again that a lot of DIYers make is not using the right product for their project. So in this case, this wasn't gonna be the application to use leftover wall paint. I needed to use something very specific that had built-in durability. So I ended up using one of my favorite products and that is a kit and that's why it's my favorite because it comes with everything you need inside for the makeover project. You don't have to research of what do I need to clean it? What do I need to paint it? How do I protect it? Everything is in there, including a product called Deglosser, which is in an incredible product. It's basically like a liquid sandpaper. It's a pre prep product that you wipe it down with. You don't have to rinse it, and it micro etches the surface, so then you can apply your bond coat and your top coat. That project I had finished in one day using all of the products in this kit, and the kit's tintable as well. I used it in white, but it can be tinted to a lot of different colors, and again, super durable. And I want to point out the campaign dresser. So I mentioned previously that my inspiration piece was very expensive and a high gloss finish. I really wanted that high gloss look to juxtapose the satin finish of the desk. I wanted the dresser to be high gloss. So I used a spray lacquer. And if you remember, I mentioned I had my son do this and he was a champ, but it's pretty easy using spray paint if you have some tools to help you out. One of which is, I've shared this before, so bear with me, but I, this is how obsessed I am with it. 
It's the Comfort Grip Spray Nozzle. I, I cannot tell you how invaluable this is. It really allows me to get the perfect even spray so my thumb or finger don't get tired and gooped up with paint. It really is like using an industrial sprayer to get a smooth finish. So the Comfort Grip is one of my must have paint tools for sure. Ooh, that looks like a really good tool. Okay, let's talk about painting the piano. What can you tell us in terms of tips and tricks there? So the piano, again, I procrastinated, procrastinated about it, but there were a few simple products that made that project go so, so quick. The first off was using one of my go-to products, Gloss Off, and this is, again, it works like the deglosser to help degloss the surface to, in most cases, eliminate the need for sanding. But then the product that I chose to use was actually chalked paint, and that is for sure one of my go-to DIY preferred paints because it sticks to almost everything and it dries so so quickly and you get a beautiful smooth velvety finish with it but to get that finish one of the most important things is to actually sand so you don't have to sand it in the beginning for adhesion purposes but you do need to sand to get a smooth finish now I've recently found these gator sanding blocks and they're quite large this is a medium fine grit they're quite large they're actually meant for drywall I love this for larger projects because it allows you to cover more surface space but also it's foam so you can curve around the piano legs if you're doing spindles for sure you can curve around those but the other thing that I just want to point out the sanding blocks, a lot of people will use them and toss them in the garbage. They're, unless they're, the surface is scri scri uh, scratched up or worn through, if it's just drywall dust or paint dust, wash this off. You can see I've used this one before. I just washed it and it's like brand new. You just take off all of that paint dust and it's still got a great amount of grittiness to use. So these can be used more than once for sure. Okay, LA, any last tips or tricks you want to leave us with? Yes, you know, spray painting season is right around the corner. We're getting so close. And I showed this a very long time ago, but I still get asked all the time. So I wanted to bring it back. And that is my, well, I use it for outdoor spray painting, my pop-up tent. Ready? I'm going to try not to take any teeth out here. <laughs> oh, it pops up super fast. <laughs> And then you can hide as well inside. But I love using this to put things like that little dresser inside. And once I've once I spray painted it, you can just roll down the cover and zip it up. And there's ventilation in it, so it'll dry, but without bugs and leaves and things blowing on it. So I love using that. And this is something else I wanted to share. This is a drop cloth that has tape on the edge. So actually, I use this around the top on the inside, so when I'm spraying, I don't actually spray the inside of the tent, but I'll just show you how it works. You can ravel this down, see that? Oh. And it stretches out really, really long. So this is great for baseboards. I actually use this when I did my piano. I, I taped off the keys uh, on the piano and the inside workings to, so dust wouldn't get inside. But these little, pro these little uh, products make such a big difference. And when I'm spray painting as well, the one other thing I wanted to point out with the campaign dresser, I spray painted the L brackets and the handles on the door fronts. So they were originally in a black finish. I spray painted them gold, but then I also spray painted the screw heads because they were exposed. And the easiest way to do that is actually to put the screws into a piece of cardboard so they're standing up straight, and then you can just give them a quick spray. That is incredible, and I'm going to use that pop-up tent to hide from my family. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the basement. And hide from <laughs> <it>. <laughs> LA, thank you so much. 